Hello, lunatics. It is good to see all of you here. Um, I am John Muir Laws, and uh, I'm here with uh, our co-host, Avea Moore, today. And um, we're here to host um, our moon party. And um, let's just start by um, wherever you are, uh, write down your location. Let's drop that into the chat. And so we're going to see who's where. And aha, we've got some Californians popping up here. We were over to Texas, the UK. Oh, good, 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 good. Reno, Nevada and Oregon. So we're getting higher up north. I hope you had good weather, Fremont, California. Alaska, Alaska, northern part of the state in Huntsville, Alaska. Oh, this is good. This is good. I really, really hope those good weather. Please keep the weather. Please, 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 please. Oh, not Alaska. Uh, not Alaska. It wasn't Alaska. Alabama. <laughs> Alaska, Alabama, Bama. With when dyslexics look at abbreviations. We do, can do all sorts of things. Um, so um, we're going to, um, <laughs> it's okay. We love Alabama too. Um, so um, let's, let's, um, let's, let's, let's think about this. What we did is we were looking at the moon and we were, um, in some cases, people were able to make multiple moon observations, and in some cases, only one. But it should be really interesting to see um, uh, what, what we have. And so I think kind of a fun way to, to get started on this, um, let's see, is if you, um, if you uh, made some interesting observations that you wanted to share, raise your paw, and um, we will um, we'll we'll start with you, and we'll we'll share out what you observed. Let's let's start with uh, Mana. Um, we're going to go to you. You can now unmute yourself, and we will be adding you to the spotlight right there. Hello, and welcome to the Moon Party. Hi, so we have two of them here. This is Sion, he's the 12 year old boy. And this is Mana, who's a nine year old girl. Good so to see you both. Did a few. Oh, this is the first one. Oh boy, oh, let, let me remove my spotlight. Okay, so, okay, this is at um, so this is at 9, 10 in the morning. No, I and think this was at night. At, 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 oh, at, 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 oh, at, at Pia, yes. So at, we're at 9, 10, and we've got the moon. I like how you've, you, you drew that line between the corners to, did that really kind of help you get the moon at the right angle? Yes. That's, that's really, really wise. Um, and we've also put down this question, you're wondering why is it that the moon orbits the earth? Really good. So you've got um, where it is, how high it is in the sky, it was 15 degrees. Did you use the one potato, two potato method? Yes. Yeah. All right. And, um, and so we are at um, and about 265 degrees west. And you notice that it's got kind of a yellow tint to it. Very good, very good. Um, there was just the other three ones that- don't. Oh, there's more. So this is the next day, yeah. Oh, so then the next day we're starting off, um, it was it, super early, it was crazy hard to find that moon. Um, and then so we're, we're starting at 1.30, we've got a 3.30 and a, uh, 442. And what were some things that you noticed about what was changing? Oh, great written notes in here too. What, what were some of the, um, 
as that day progressed, what did you observe about the sort of changes in that moon? Well, it moved higher and it moved, like at first it was 85 degrees east, then 124 southeast and 196 south. So it was moving. Nice. And in the morning, there was no yellow outline. It was only in the night. And then in, in the night, in the late evening, you saw that, that yellow color come into it? Yes. Nice. Um, how close to it was to the horizon was it when you saw the um, yellow color? Um, not, I don't think it, I couldn't see the horizon because it was nighttime. Okay. Um, so that's so. So you're 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 observing that it's sort of changing. It's the direction that you look to see the moon changes. Yes. And you also and how high it changes. Tell me a little bit more about that. The observations you made with its height. Um, it's I don't. Oh, this one. So. Yeah, so it went from 50 to 70 to 80. So from 130 to 330, it moved from 50 to 70. But from 330 to 442, it moved 70 to 80. So nice. 50 to 70, it went higher. I like it. So you're, and then also that other evening, you had seen it really close to the horizon over in the western sky. This one? Um, it was I, think, I think it was 15, 15 degrees above the horizon. Yeah. yeah. So that's, if you were to extend your hand, it would be one fist and a half. So that's pretty, sort of that, that far above the horizon. That's, that's cool. Um, thank you. This and, and where are you located? Where on the planet in are Fremont? All right, so we're neighbors. So yeah, we're looking at that from the same part of the planet. Excellent. And what did your your brother see? So, oh, and tell me your name ag again. I've 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 forgotten. Um, Sion. Sion. Yeah. Sion. Great. And what did you observe? So the first one, um, pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, hey, uh, by the way, mad props on the moon title. Everybody check mm -hmm. out that title, right? So you've got the crescent in one of the O's, you've got craters in the other O, and then on the N, you've got a compass superimposed over that. That is fun. I like it. I like the way you think. And then so the all of the observations are pretty much the same as my sister. Mm -hmm. And you, you're able to spot the sea of crises also. Yeah. Did you have to use um, binoculars for that? Yeah. But but you could you could spot them once you had the binoculars. Up. That's great. Yeah. And then the next page is the next day. Ah, uh, yeah, look at that rotate. And then you've got a fourth one that yeah. night. Yeah, that was at uh, 8.30. So, boy, look at how much that, uh, that crescent has rotated around. Yeah, like 90 degrees. I think it might have been like, because it was this way. Then it went this way and then back. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a that's a lot of rotation. Um, yeah. Well done, well done. Um, it also uh, coloring in the dark part makes this really the diagram really easy to read and really easy to to yeah, see. I made it kind of blurry during the day because it was blurry during the day. And it's it's much so much harder to see. Did you did you have a hard time sometimes you get out there and you can't find the moon? Yeah, I think in the 
the morning of the day before we tried to do it but we couldn't find the moon yeah i i got up um early both <laughs> <laughs> the, the day before and the day of to try to get the moon early and I was going I'm going to get this rising in the sky and I couldn't find it I couldn't find it it was, wasn't until it was higher up um I didn't see it until maybe around 10 o'clock excellent thank you so much for sharing that thank you Winston. all right now so that's that's an observation set from California and let's see, is there someone in the, um, let, let's do, do, let's, do we want to go either somebody who is further east um, than that, um, or um, somebody who is further north or south than that. So that's in the, 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 the Bay Area. Does anybody else have another data set that we can um that we could check out if so just raise your paw all right um let's go to charlotte um thank you for joining us you can now unmute yourself and we'll pop you into the spotlight hi there hi. hello i'm in the um uk is that okay oh oh boy okay this is this is going to be fun Okay, um, I can see it very well. Uh, come back a bit. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So you, you, you made observations across the entire day. I had to start at um, noon because it was too cloudy. And this is Monday as well, because it was too cloudy on Sunday. Yeah. Um, so, I, so I thought I'd go through the day um, and it, I suppose uh, the most interesting bit was um, about 2 p.m. There was this like rainbow sort of halo, which I suppose is similar to what um, the others were saying. And then sort of by by 2 p.m. it started to go more, um, 5 p.m. sorry, it started to go a bit more golden color. And I didn't know what that, why that was. Oh, I have never noticed that. Was that visible naked eye or was that oh, more? No, binoculars. <laughs> That's what I was with binoculars. Oh, interesting, interesting. And then that's fun. The sea of crises, and then uh, there was like a, another bit here. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that was the sea of fertility, maybe. I was mm -hmm. trying to work out, but I wasn't sure. Oh, good, good, good. You know the. Um... Oh, this is this is fun. So, from where you were, the sea of crises was. Um, on the top half yes yep that that's it's 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 a it's it's nice having that little spot um uh uh close to um close to the edge because it as, as the crescent starts to move we, that it really pops out oh that's really neat um and um then there's this you've you've added this uh, this is cool also seeing the uh you put in that uh wash so when it's starting to get dark at night there you're adding in the dark on the right hand side of the page well I'm i tried but i'm not sure it was very successful but i had to go yeah um, and then i wasn't sure um i think it was in one of your videos that you you were talking about that we always see the same side of the moon. Um, mm -hmm. So I had a look at the, the tidal locking because I thought that was quite interesting. Obviously I had to look online, but I didn't know that. So that was that was quite an interesting thing to find out about. Yeah, and it's something that I, I like that you've got going on here is that, so you were curious about something, you did a little bit of research and you also put in the, um, the, the 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 reference of where you got that information that's really good epistemology a lot of people just kind of put in the fact but they don't keep track of where they got it okay um and i guess the only other thing was that it's um the moon sort of started off um almost leaning forward as i was looking at it, i suppose and mm -hmm. then throughout the day it was almost leaning backwards and I said it looked like a, a little smile by the end of the day. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, so the some some interesting things. So what time did your, the, your moon go to sleep? What time um, was it setting? Well, it it disappeared behind the hills by about ten p.m. So I couldn't see any more. But I forgot to do the um, potato thing. So I was. <laughs> You one potato, two potato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've got, um, and what is your latitude relative to California? Um, 52. Okay. And see, I'm, I'm going to run and grab my globe. Hold on. I'm wearing my headphones today because it kind of feels like mission control. Um, so um, we are we are up here. Whoop. And so if I draw a line around here, that kind of puts you kind of at a latitude that is kind of equivalent to somewhere up in Canada. So you're you're much further north than than we are. And that is that is that is that's interesting. Um, yeah, so near the U, sort of about the same latitude as the uh, the border between United States and Canada, maybe a little bit further north than that. So we're a little bit further down from you, and it's interesting to note that. Um, Hold on, let's bring in um, Siyun again and, um, and, and Mana, if I could. Um, I'm gonna unmute and add in spotlight. Um, did, did, you, did you folks spot the Sea of Crises? Yes. And was it on the northern part or the southern part? Uh, the top. Or oh, sorry, the, the the was it on the top part or the the the, the bottom part the, of the moon? Yeah, it was the top the part. Top the part. the top part also. All right, so yes, okay, great, great, great. Um, so so this is this is interesting. So to to note that you are um. That, that, that people observing from down here in California and up at a higher latitude on the other side of the planet um, are both observing essentially the same, that, that, the, that the moon is oriented, um, the, the, the moon in terms of like what's up and what's down on it and the direction of the smile you were seeing basically the same things. Um, for uh, Siyun and, and, and Mana, is, what are the times that you, that you observed it? It'd be fun to compare one of your observations um, of where it was and the angle in the sky. Um, what is one where you think you got that angle really precise? Yeah, um, that would be the first one was probably the most so this was the Sunday night at 9, 10 p.m. Okay, so let's take a look at the angle of that, that, that moon. Um, Charlotte, compare yours, the, your nine o'clock observation. Did you have a nine o'clock observation? Um, yeah. Um, and let's yeah, see, right. hold on, I'm gonna remove mine so we can see these two side by side. All right, so which is the, your nine o'clock? Uh, that my last one. It was ah, very, okay. This is interesting. So, and it was, 
you know, we're seeing very similar angles in the moon there. So we're seeing it at the same, the same basic angle. That is, that is interesting. And we are both in the Northern hemisphere. All right, so notice that, so we've got different, what we have so far is just to, just to review, this is, this is good, this is good. We have um, uh, we have places on opposite sides of the globe, and we have two different latitudes. So one closer to the equator, one closer to the pole. And we're getting, um, we're getting sort of a, a similar angle at the same time of night, not the same moment, but it's interesting that at the same time of night, you are both seeing the moon kind of coming down and doing something like that. Hmm. Hmm. Now, but wait, there's more. Because is there somebody on the call here who's either really close to the equator or in the southern hemisphere? Is there or what do we have? Um, I'm gonna jump over to the have any southern hemisphere people oh denied all right um so um are there is there a set of um of other observations that somebody made that they wanted to share how they 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 documented and described the moon and the moon angle um, so, Jack, I know that you were uh, the person who originally got us started on this. Um, you uh, are are the person responsible for um, us actually having a moon party in the first place because you said, like, let's pay a little bit more attention to 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 the moon. Um, um, <clears throat> actually, it was cloudy. Oh no! Denied. Oh, you were shut and up. It's been cloudy for like the last few days. Like it's pouring rain right now. Oh, well, boy, here in California, we could sure use some of that rain. We've got a big old drought sitting on us right here, which is great for moon observations, but not very good for the rest of the system. So <laughs> I guess we can uh, count our, 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 our blessings. Um, but another time when you've got clear skies, um, you can do a bunch of this. Um, also, you know, just it, it won't be kind of in sync with the moon party, but you can still make lots of lunar observations. But sorry, you've been shut out from the sky. I know you're looking forward to doing that. And um, it's not really moon related, but um, could I share something cool with you? I think you could definitely share something cool with us. Um, please. I really got inspired by the um, idea of like making paint and ink. Um, so I made some, I, we were digging up our garden to plant pumpkins and um, I found some colorful sedimentary rocks and I um, washed them so they didn't, so they weren't dirty and then um, wet them a little bit and ground them together. And I was able to make a nice um, brown paint. Oh, cool. Have you Which painted really anything cool. with it? Um, so this is this is. I haven't found something the right shape to paint it with, but here's what it looks like. Oh wow! Oh, what a nice ochre color. That's cool. So that's a paint that you made, Jack. That's really cool. Yeah, and I used it on some of my um, little blown up question. Um, um, like the little cues for question. Yeah. Blew up, I put some in there too. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's nice, I like it. Jack, that's really cool. Um, this, is, this, is, uh, this is really, really fun. Thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, so Susan, you have been, uh, you are um, a, a hardcore math person and you've been doing some, some moon thinking and visualization. Um, love to bring you on 
Um, also, just looking at the, the blackboard behind you there, um, that's kind of, yep, you've got math chops. That's right. <laughs> uh, have chalk, will travel. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my office at work today, and I, and I have to teach a class in half an hour or so, okay. but I joined as much as I could. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I didn't didn't realize the, the background would be so. I could I could draw diagrams on the blackboard. Um, That's right. <laughs> well, my my suggestion was I I had I had shared this um, back in January, and it's not a direct observation of the moon, so I figured I would just sort of hang back. But but um, since being that we don't have anybody um, with some observations from the southern hemisphere to share today, um, I thought. Um, I, this might be interesting to, to look at, but I, I had had a conversation with my uncle, who's an amateur astronomer, back at Christmas time, and um, we were talking about this, this idea of of when do you see different parts of the moon and things like that. And so he and I have been discussing uh, the idea of seeing the waxing moon as we are currently observing, and the fact that it's visible in the sky at certain times of the day or night, um, and that we see it as the left side of the moon is illuminated. Um, and, uh, and then I was having a discussion with him and I thought about it and I thought, but I think that people on hemisphere will see the right side of the moon illuminated at the same time. And my uncle said, no, no, no. It's the same part of the moon that is lit up no matter where you are. And I said, I agree, but I think it's on the right. So he called up my friend, the astronomer, the, the historian of astronomy, <laughs> And she says, no, 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 it's the west side of the moon that's illuminated when it's waxing. And so then that's how I sort of figured out how to draw a diagram that would explain that. Um, so this is when the moon is a waxing moon. And of course, my lovely little geocentric model of the, of the solar system, because why not? Um, the moon is essentially trailing behind the sun. If you imagine the sun is traveling around the ecliptic. Um, and so if you're looking at it from the north and you're looking in the southern direction, which I think all of our observers have been heading, have been looking a little bit south <clears throat> and you're seeing the right side of the moon. Did I mix up right and left earlier? I think I may have, but you're seeing the right side of the moon lit up. But at the same time, that person in the sun hemisphere looking in, at the same moon, in fact, seeing the same part of the moon that is pointed toward the earth and that is lit up, but what they're seeing, they're having to look north to see it, and so what they see is the left side of the moon being illuminated at the same time, mm -hmm. um, because it's a part of the moon that is pointed basically in the direction of the sun that's being lit up. Yes, yes. So, and yes. yeah, I just, it, was, it was sort of like, it took me a while to figure out how to understand that enough to be able to make a diagram of it and then to make a diagram of it to make me understand it more. So, but now I need to, we need to corroborate that with some actual observations. That, that was what was, I was hoping we would get here uh, in this. We yeah. had no. some, some okay. uh, but uh, it, <clears throat> the, it, it, it might be that people in the, um, well, we, 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 we hope we, in the future, we might, we'll, go, we'll try to get some, uh, posted on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page. That would be great. Um, that is that I love your visualization there, and I also I, I I know I know you know that the sun doesn't go around the Earth, but I love that you you did that in your diagram because sort of the functional relationships of those sort of as you're kind of observing that from being on Earth would be would be essentially the same. Um, and so it, it shows just a tremendous amount of plasticity in your mathematician brain. And- Mathematicians do this all the time. We just, we just declare sp spherical cows because we can. That, that's right, yes. Uh, yeah, as, as, assume a spherical person. Exactly. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> everything falls out from there. Um, so, and, and, and also, you know, what, what it, it makes me think about is sort of in your brain, you're sort of used to sort of moving variables around in a formula and in, in the formula being a model and that you can kind of isolate any one of them. And what you've done is 
you have isolated the earth and then have the others as just the, the moving things around them. Your brain is incredible. I love well, that. I think that, that we are all coming up with such, such yes. cool observations and things. I think it would be interesting to take basically recreate that diagram in 3D, take your globe, get somebody to hold a moon, get somebody to hold a sun, and then sort of, if you could like pick a point on the globe and then sort of lean your head so you're looking straight from that point across, like so that, so that you're looking right across where that point is and seeing what your moon and sun actually look like in that point, you could make the observations of the moon without actually having to go to the southern hemisphere because you know, travel's that's, expensive. That's true. Um, to get a um, to do that. Or if you can stand on your head, then you'd be get the Southern Hemisphere view. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, so if you do a handstand, then you, you get to, to do that. So that's that is really fun. Um, let me bring in Rena and then I'll um, to the discussion. You can now unmute yourself and we're going to add you into the spotlight. Susan, that was cool. Thank you. Thank you. Glad, Hi. Glad to share. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Um, we had uh, clouds almost the entire time. So I got four observations out of a couple of days. Um, oh, so oh. I didn't get that many, but uh, I was able to observe the going from the top and going around towards the bottom. I didn't get as far as 9 p.m. So I can't compare my angle, I think was looking a slightly different than the 7 p.m. on some of the other observations, but not very much different. Mm -hmm. but one of the things I wondered was because I got so few observations, I couldn't find the lunar noon, but I yeah. noticed that yeah. two of my observations, one in the morning, one, one at noon and one around um, six o'clock in the evening were both at 55 degrees in elevation oh so you I had are this idea clever that if both of those are at 55 degrees and if it goes up and down in a symmetrical arc that i should be able to extrapolate between those two cups over here and figure out at what time the the lunar moon uh lunar noon would have been and, and you then have a question mark for how high it is. You know about when it should have been, but you right. I noticed that, that you have a dotted line and a question mark up there for how high it is showing right. what you are extrapolating and what, what you are, where it's coming from, <coughs> from, from, from evidence. Oh, wow, Rena, that is, I'm gonna bring the, the mathematician back on. Um, uh, Susan? Uh, what do you think about this kind of uh, seeing this kind of, uh, of of reasoning and thinking? I, I, that's great. I think I think that's that's I think you're making an assumption that the arc that it makes is symmetrical, um, right? But I think it's a reasonable assumption. Um, and see now, and I'm curious, like what exactly is the curve that it's making? Is it is it because we have lots of different kinds of curves that make that look out sort of like that? Right. Yeah. And so here's the thing I'm noticing on your picture is that your curve sort of goes goes down and then has a little itty bitty little sort of right inflection kind of, kind of point. Yeah. Yeah, inflection point is that word? Yeah. And I and I'm and I'm now sort of curious like, is this an artifact of just you, you drew it quickly and it and it wasn't perfect, or is it because the moon actually did that? And I'm thinking, well, what happens if we if we look at the curve that that makes at different latitudes? You'll is the curve going to be steeper or flatter? What happens if you go above the Arctic Circle in the summertime? Mm. Because then you should be, I believe, seeing the moon never dipping below the horizon. So are you going to get oh, sine wave? Yeah. Sine wave. It makes mm -hmm. me think that maybe the shape of that curve that you have there is a part of a sine wave. <sighs> maybe. Whoa. Now, I'm As not opposed to a circular arc or a parabola or something like that. Right. But it might not be a sine wave. It might be something that, that might, might, be. might be another wave that's like a sine wave. I don't know, because we're trying to like see now I'm like we're, we're projecting these different kinds of curves onto a onto a you know a circular coordinate system and just 
<laughs> or it could be that my instrument is so primitive, my fist instrument, that mm -hmm. this is just noise. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's really not an inflection point at all. Yeah, it was, it was, was this within the sort of margin of error of how we're creating data? But also I wanted right. to point out that Rina also, when she made that assumption, she specified that she was making that assumption. Mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes, right yeah. ah, right that's so cool oh this is fun so so you so, see how like messing around with this it starts to like we see part of a pattern and then that makes you go like oh well uh mm. and then then you're now you're thinking like what if i was above the arctic circle in summer like what would like tracing the sun mm -hmm. what pattern would that make mm -hmm. what pattern would the moon make you know during that 24-hour period Hmm. But um, you, know, you see, your, your instruments are so primitive, you know, just, just doing this. But yes. the thing is, is that, I mean, nowadays we can measure these things with such great precision with these great telescopes and these geostationary satellites and, and all of these incredibly detailed, and we have like apps on our phones that can do all these things. But thousands of years ago, people were making these observations. They hadn't invented glass yet. Right. You know, they right. didn't have telescopes. They, you know, whatever they could, Whatever they could measure was, you know, barely better than than this. Um, and and like the fact that they were paying enough attention to the moon to notice that it was at different heights at different times and looked different, and you could pay attention to that. And they figured out all this stuff. I mean, people in ancient times had um, mostly geocentric models of, of the Earth, but knew that the Earth was round, and were detailing. And there's astronomical tables of exactly where the moon is relative to these stars and all these different things and all of it they figured all this stuff out you don't have to have like the most perfect telescope to figure out these things you can just go and look right. yeah. if you keep enough track Th this is and, this and is... in fact yes. sorry no no please i have to tell you the end of the story which is um i i have to ha test the assumption right yeah. and the easiest way for me to test the assumption of the symmetrical is figure out what it gives me for the time of lunar moon and then go look it up as what the lunar moon, the lunar noon was that day. And my calculation showed about 1520 and it was actually 1524. So. I would say that is well within the margin of error. That, isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? Like, it used to be that back in the day, people figured stuff out by looking at stuff. Yeah. And we can still do that. We can right. still figure stuff out by looking at stuff. I mean, that's, I mean, that is, that for me is like the big news flash about this. Like my, some of my neighbors were going like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm looking at the moon and I'm gonna figure like this stuff like. Do you, do you that on Google? I said, uh, yeah, I think it probably is somewhere, but I'm not looking at that because the moon's out, right? And like, I, I, would, I would think that your neighbors would not bat an eye at you doing any kind of weird thing. The, no, there's, there, there are shenanigans. There are shenanigans. <laughs> I would think that your neighbors would be so used to shenanigans, though, that they wouldn't even bat an eye. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let, let's, th this is, this is so cool. This is, this is cool. Um, I'm going to bring in, um, uh, two more folks. Um, I, I see Landon's got something to share. So does Anne, and we want to check out what they observed. And then I'm going to show you what I observed and, um, also just some, some other little kind of resources about this. And, um, my hope is that what we're doing here is that we're getting our brains to get curious about things that we can figure out by more looking at the moon and stuff. All right. So this is, this is, this is cool. Like that, that, that little uh, extrapolation that you did there, Rena, this, that makes me very happy. It was very fun. Very very <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go because I have to. All right. Have a really great class. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I'm going to bring in Landon. Um, hello there. Oh, I have to allow you to unmute. Sorry, my bad. Now you can unmute. Oh, there we go. Hello. Okay. Hello, we hear you. Hey. Yes. Okay. So I just wanted to confirm. I got Rena's pattern at the end where it, 
so I got about three hours of non cloudiness in all the days, but it was in Sunday night. And I, Roseanne had shared the other day that she uses the sun and moon app. So I was taking my own one potato, two potato measurements and then kind of and using my compass to check um, for those coordinates, mm -hmm. but then I would check on the app just to see for fun. And for until about, let's see, um, 842, these all aligned with the app. And then I got Rena's little tail at the end for the last two I could see. Oh. And that did not align with the app, but I went with it anyways and drew it. And then here it went behind <laughs> clouds right as it was setting and it turned nice gold. I've never seen the moon set turn gold. So that was fun. Oh. But I got the little tail and just want to share that. Oh, interesting. So this is, so you and Rena um, both uh, got the little tail. And then, so what we're yeah. trying to figure out is, is, you know, again, this, this, it, you know, it may be an, an artifact of our, 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 our sampling approach, or um, as we're getting more people noticing it, um, it may be that there is something going on there, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why- I thought why, it was like, maybe how my eyes uh, see something close to her, the horizon, you know, like did it? Because both uh, of the last two jumped for me too. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, there is something called the moon illusion where things, as the moon gets closer to the horizon, it appears to us to be bigger, even though it's bigger, actually the same size. If you measure it, it's over. the same size. Yeah. Um, but there yeah, this is moving. Thing, it's, yes. There Rina? was another thing that was weird too, in the fact that oh, I'm backwards. These two measurements were the moon was between, by my eye, 845 and 245. Whereas on the very last measurement, it was 8.30 to 2.30, as if it, it went from this angle around, or back, backwards, the round of that angle, and then went back a little bit. But again, that could be just my eyes, or it could be, you know, how I was looking at it from a little different angle. But I looked at it a couple of times to see if that was what I was seeing, and that was what I was seeing. Great. So these are also things that by then getting more measurements on, on, on more nights, we might be thinking like, you know, can I kind of get this again and sort of realizing that just, you know, that, that the, the angle that it is, is going to be really, really important for me to dial in on. And, um, and we're, and that's, that's challenging to do. This is this is cool, uh, Landon. Those are really cool observations. It's so interesting that you also got the tail. Yeah. What well, what's going on here? And I checked it, so many times because I was like, oh, what's going? You know, over and over, and it was definitely a tail. <laughs> all right. And and so you know, what we want to think about is, you know, there are. Um, what what we do is, we as scientists we just start geeking out looking at stuff. And then we start to observe patterns. And then we want, need to figure out, you know, are these patterns an artifact of my sampling method? Um, you know, that, uh, you know, I, 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 I determine that, you know, you know, nobody carries umbrellas because I don't like going out sampling on rainy days. Um, the uh, you know is is it is is this uh, it, do, is there a bias in the way that I'm kind of collecting my data, um, and then getting um, confirmation from other people like are what are you seeing what are you seeing what are you seeing, and also being aware of the sort of weird tendency that we have that when we want to see a particular thing we're expecting to see something sometimes we see what we expect to see, and um, and so kind of trying to 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 fight against that is also part of um, of, of our scientific process, but this is, this is so cool. Um, Landa, Landa and Rena, this is, this is interesting, right? And isn't it fun when you see something that is different than you expected? I also came up with a few of those myself and I'll share with those with you folks in a moment. That's great. Um, let's bring on Ann Chadwick from Point Blue Conservation Science and see what you observed. Hey, um, you can now unmute. Okay, great. 
I'm loving everybody's observations and all the good questions that come up. Um, so much fun. And um, so I used to do a lot of photography and that's a picture I took a long time ago up at Sea Ranch on the North Coast. Um, oh, look at the Sea of Crises up there. And in order to get that, I had to figure out when and where the moon was going to rise and be in the right place at the right time. And so I, I had studied this for a while, like, uh, I think it comes up about an hour later every night. And then, of course, at full moon, it's opposite the sun, which is why it's full. Um, so when I was doing this exercise, I thought about that as well and got sort of observations on different days. And it's almost as if they're like backing up, like this was March 6th, this was March 7th at about the same time, oh. and maybe about an hour later, oh. and I, I made a note that the sun was sort of lighting it up from underneath, yeah. Yeah. and then which day, I can't see, uh, March 8th, so just yesterday, I was just out walking, and I noticed, oh, that looks kind of like a moon noon, noon moon, lunar moon <laughs> but it was vertical <laughs> and it was kind of vertical and yeah and the sun is, was still... yeah, is the position of the moon vertical at lunar noon oh and where is the sun like is the sun lighting it up from here rather than here and then earlier in the day 1 42 p.m i had noticed it um and the sun was up <laughs> high in the sky Whoop. So kind of making those observations. And uh, there's, look, there's my moon. Here. Oh, yes. Yes, that's great. Um, um, that reminds me of Siyun's little moons. Yeah. Uh, I got to put some uh, moon patterns on my moons, just like you folks. Got to get your moon title on. So yeah. speaking of moon titles, so I need some help from the gang here. Um, I'm a musician and I've been working on a, a moon suite. Um, so we have Blue Moon, Moon River, Fly Me to the Moon, Moonlight Serenade, Arthur's Moonlight Theme Sonata. Has between the, the moon in New York City. Moonlight Sonata is a good one. Um, moon Dance, Moon Shadow. So if maybe people have more moon, more moon ones, uh, drop those uh, yeah. into the chat. Okay. Avea is already getting that going. Light Thank it up, you. folks. All right. I'll work on those. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to share uh, my moon geeking because I have been doing some moon geeking. And um, here we go. Um, Um, so let's see, it all started over here when the moon was big back February 17th. And then as it moved across the sky, that was the first time that I observed that little tilt in it. And so I was really excited about that. And so the, um, the, the Sea of Crises started off on the top and then later on was over at the side. That's why I just love tracking the Sea of Crises. I mean, it's just like a really good little indicator spot. Um, and then um, a few days later, um, doing the same thing as the moon was starting to get smaller. So this is on a waning moon. And I was learning some of the, the craters over there. Uh, the, um, the Sea of Moisture and uh, Grimaldi Crater are really useful things on the other side of the moon. So those are kind of file those away. They kind of can. Um, and, and then um, I was, you know, here on um, February 24th, um, here's moon being orange at the start, sort of close to the horizon, turning around, turning around. Um, and uh, and then, I, then I lost it. Um, oops. And let me see here, I'm going to... Um, then the moon's getting smaller and, 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 and smaller. And then, um, 
there's uh, on the 26th, it was coming up near Venus. So Venus was close to the moon. Um, and that was early in the morning. So check this out. Look, here's where things start to get, <laughs> right? Um, so here is um, starting at about 5.30 um, at, in the, the morning, the moon is coming up as this little crescent and going across the sky and um, setting, um, I kind of lost it somewhere around noon. It was about here. And then I lost it into the haze of the sky. But check this out because I also was, was tracking the sun at the same time. And that's this line up here with the little purple line. So this is the sun actually came up Sunrise was at 7 a.m. And um, so the moon gets up first, and then the sun came out. And, uh, oh, here's, here's how Venus looks through my telescope. Venus, you also, so Venus and Mercury, you can see crescents on them, but you can't see crescents on any of the other planets. So if you see a crescent on planet, it's one of the ones that are inside of the orbit of the Earth. And it'd be, it's fun to kind of get out a little piece of paper and see if you can figure out why that is, right? So, but look at this, here's the sun coming up. So like uh, starting at seven, good morning, right? Then rises up, here's noon. And then this was weird. This is talk about operator error. This was the sun going backwards in the sky. I think that there may be um, near my house, some magnetic anomalies. Um, I've discovered later on that as I walk around to different places that, the um i can get my compass needle to move so i'm now very curious about what happens um underneath my feet with electrical conduits or wires above my head so how do those things affect me but 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 look at this how the arc of the moon is doing this here and the arc of the sun it's going higher in the sky setting so rising outside of that and setting outside of that so it's a wider arc with the moon going inside of it. That was the waning moon. Now, let's check out the waxing moon. Because on, so this is, is, is you actually see measurements here over two days. And um, that uh, if it's got a blue circle around that, that's March 6th. If it's got just a purple line, that's March 5th. So the sun is roughly doing this on those two days. And the moon is now going outside of that. So the moon is rising after the sun. It is rising higher in the sky. And it is setting um, after the sun goes down in an arc that is wider than and, and taller than what the sun is doing. Isn't that interesting? So now I'm wondering, like, when, when, was there a point where they both were along the same line? Was that at the, at the new moon? So now I'm going to check out at the, and now I have to check out at the half moon. And I also want to do the same thing at the full moon to see how, they track across the sky because somehow it flipped from being the, 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 the sun being on the outside to the sun being on the inside. Isn't that crazy? That was fun. Um, and the, let's see, there's one other, um, so let's see, things that, um, so things I'm, I'm wondering about that I want to geek out on now is how does the path of the moon um, relative to the the uh, the sun change in the the month. So yeah, that 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 yeah, getting getting at different phases of the moon. How does the moon line up with that? I also want to calculate the speed of the rotation of the moon. Um, I also discovered that that one potato two potato system, and that you know, like this is twenty five degrees. This is ten degrees. This is 15 degrees. Um, I, that wasn't working too well for me. 
right? So I want to somehow find a way of calibrating. How can I calibrate my hand to get that to be more accurate? Because I was counting, you know, I could get 50 degrees by, oh, let's zoom back here. I get 50 degrees by doing this, right? But I would come to a different place in the sky if I did this. So I need to, um, you know, figure out some more stuff with that. But, oh, oh, and this is, this is fun. This is kind of like what Anne was just saying. Um, so this was 9 p.m. on the, um, on the 6th. This, or sorry, it's on the 6th, uh, right here. 9 p.m. on the 7th was right here. 9 p.m. last night was up here. So as I'm going now and, and recording, where's the moon at 9 o'clock? I'm finding it then kind of getting more full, but also going back and and going backwards on the arc to sort of like Anna's finding. So, oh, that's fun. Um, one last thing that I want to show you. Oh my gosh. And then it's time for the Nature Journal's Educators Forum um, is check this out. Um, I had mentioned this to people at a previous workshop. Um, This is a picture of our Lion King friends strutting past the moon made by an artist who is, uh, this is a, a scene from the Lion King movie. Um, but the, the artists uh, in it, um, I think have spent too much time in North America. Um, what I was hoping we would do, we remember we were talking about, Susan was talking about the view from the north and the view from the south. Um, check out, here's the Sea of Crises up here. And um, where you see the Sea of Crises is going to be in different places depending on your latitude. So, um, the, the angle at which you see the, um, the, 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 the moon is going to change depending on where you are, northern and southern hemisphere. So you're in that crescent, you're, or you're seeing the same part of the moon, but it's going to be flipped if you're on the North Pole versus the South Pole. So, um, hold on, I'm going to hide floating meeting controls. There we go. Um, so when you are documenting your moon with where your sea of crises is, with how high above, so how high, sort of where, where what part, sort of the angle that the moon is at that particular time, that's going to tell you something about your latitude that changes with your latitude. How high the moon gets in the sky is going to also change with your latitude. And um, the angle that it's at, um, whether, you know, it's, uh, you know, uh, sort of the, the, the angle is also going to change with your time. So at any specific time, when you record your moon, we want to note the time that I drew the moon. And um, if I do that, a future um, explorer um, looking at my, um, my journal, would be able to infer from that my latitude based on the sketch that I made of the moon, if I included the time that I saw it. Would also help them to have the altitude of the moon in the sky and the direction 
360 degrees, you know, with north the, with uh, the where it is on the compass. But your moon is a reflection of exactly where you are on the planet. That's pretty cool. And um, I hope that this was fun for you. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have any uh, callers in from the Southern Hemisphere. Um, we're going to try to encourage some people who did take those notes down there um, to post those on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page. So thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, my co-host, Ivea Moore, the mad botanist. Um, we're, um, I hope that you had fun with this. Um, Ave and I are now about to bounce over to the Nature Journal Educators Forum. And uh, so if you're one of our Nature Journal Educators, we'll see you there. Um, um, otherwise, until next time, stay loony. Thank you, everybody.